Annie Jump Cannon (December 11, 1863 to April 13, 1941) was an American astronomer whose cataloging work was instrumental in the development of contemporary stellar classification. With Edward C. Pickering, she is credited with the creation of the Harvard Classification Scheme, which was the first serious attempt to organize and classify stars based on their temperatures and spectral types. She was nearly deaf throughout her career. She was a suffragist and a member of the National Women's Party. Topic: Personal life. Annie Jump Cannon was born on December 11, 1863, in Dover, Delaware. She was the eldest of three daughters born to Wilson Cannon, a Delaware shipbuilder and state senator, and his second wife, Mary Jump. Cannon's mother was the first person to teach her the constellations and she encouraged her to follow her own interests, suggesting that she pursue studies in mathematics, chemistry, and biology at Wellesley College. Cannon and her mother used an old astronomy textbook to identify stars seen from their attic. Cannon's mother also taught her daughter household economics, which Cannon would later use to organize her research. Cannon took her mother's advice and pursued her love of astronomy. Cannon suffered hearing loss sometime during her childhood or early adult years. Sources vary on the time frame and actual cause, although it is sometimes attributed to scarlet fever. Some people claim Cannon's hearing loss made it difficult for her to socialize, resulting in her immersing herself in her work. She never married and did not have children. Education <inaudible> 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 At Wilmington Conference Academy, today known as Wesley College, Cannon was a promising student, particularly in mathematics. In 1880, Cannon was sent to Wellesley College in Massachusetts, one of the top academic schools for women in the U.S., where she studied physics and astronomy. Cannon studied under Sarah Frances Whiting, one of the few women physicists in the United States at the time, and went on to become the valedictorian at Wellesley College. She graduated with a degree in physics in 1884 and returned home to Delaware for a decade. During these years, Cannon developed her skills in the new art of photography. In 1892 she traveled through Europe taking photographs with her Blair box camera. After she returned home her prose and photos from Spain were published in a pamphlet called, In the Footsteps of Columbus. Published by the Blair Company and distributed as a souvenir at the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition of 1893, soon afterward, Cannon was stricken with scarlet fever that rendered her nearly deaf. This hearing loss made it difficult for Cannon to socialize. As a result, she immersed herself in her work. In 1894, Cannon's mother died and life at home grew more difficult. She wrote to her former instructor at Wellesley, Professor Sarah Frances Whiting, to see if there was a job opening. Whiting hired her as a junior physics teacher at the college. This opportunity allowed Cannon to take graduate courses at the college in physics and astronomy. Whiting also inspired Cannon to learn about spectroscopy. In order to gain access to a better telescope, Cannon enrolled at Radcliffe College as a special student, continuing her studies of astronomy. Radcliffe was set up near Harvard College for Harvard professors to repeat their lectures to the young Radcliffe women. This relationship gave Cannon access to the Harvard College Observatory. In 1896, Edward C. Pickering hired her as his assistant at the observatory. In 1907, Cannon finished her studies and received her master's from Wellesley College. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Career. In 1896, Cannon became a member of Pickering's Women. A group of women hired by Harvard Observatory director Edward C. Pickering to complete the Henry Draper catalog, with the goal of mapping and defining every star in the sky to a photographic magnitude of about nine. In her notes, she referred to brightness as int, which was short for intensity. Pickering said that she was able to classify stars quickly. Miss Cannon is the only person in the world, man or woman, who can do this work so quickly. Anna Draper, the widow of wealthy physician and amateur astronomer Henry Draper, set up a fund to support the work. Men at the laboratory did the labor of operating the telescopes and taking photographs while the women examined the data, carried out astronomical calculations, and cataloged those photographs during the day. 
Pickering made the catalog a long-term project to obtain the optical spectra of as many stars as possible and to index and classify stars by spectra. Not long after work began on the Draper catalog, a disagreement developed as to how to classify the stars. The analysis was first started by Nettie Farrar, who left a few months later to be married. This left the problem to the ideas of Henry Draper's niece Antonia Mori who insisted on a complex classification system and Williamina Fleming who was overseeing the project for Pickering, and wanted a much more simple, straightforward approach. Cannon negotiated a compromise, she started by examining the bright southern hemisphere stars. To these stars, she applied a third system, a division of stars into the spectral classes O, B, A, F, G, K, M. Her scheme was based on the strength of the bomber absorption lines. After absorption lines were understood in terms of stellar temperatures, her initial classification system was rearranged to avoid having to update star catalogs. Astronomy students are taught to use a mnemonic of, O oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. As a way to remember stellar classification, Cannon published her first catalogue of stellar spectra in 1901. In 1911 she was made the curator of astronomical photographs at Harvard. In 1914, she was admitted as an honorary member of the Royal Astronomical Society. In 1921, she became one of the first women to receive an honorary doctorate from a European university when she was awarded an honorary doctor's degree in math and astronomy from Groningen University. Cannon and the other women at the observatory were criticized at first for being out of their place and not being housewives. Women did not commonly rise beyond the level of assistant in this line of work at the time, and many were paid only 25 cents an hour to work seven hours a day, six days a week. One of the other women in the observatory who made significant contributions, Henrietta Swan Levitt, shared with Cannon the experience of also being deaf. Cannon dominated this field because of her tidiness and patience for the tedious work, and even helped the men in the observatory gain popularity. Cannon helped broker partnerships and exchanges of equipment between men in the international community and assumed an ambassador like role outside of it. She wrote books and articles to increase astronomy's status, and in 1933, she represented professional women at the World's Fair in Chicago Century of Progress. Cannon manually classified more stars in a lifetime than anyone else, with a total of around 350,000 stars. She discovered 300 variable stars, five novas, and one spectroscopic binary, creating a bibliography that included about 200,000 references. She discovered her first star in 1898, though she was not able to confirm it until 1905. When she first started cataloging the stars, she was able to classify 1,000 stars in three years, but by 1913, she was able to work on 200 stars an hour. Cannon could classify three stars a minute just by looking at their spectral patterns and, if using a magnifying glass, could classify stars down to the ninth magnitude, around 16 times fainter than the human eye can see. Her work was also highly accurate. On May 9, 1922, the International Astronomical Union passed the resolution to formally adopt Cannon's stellar classification system, with only minor changes. It is still being used for classification today. Also in 1922, Cannon spent six months in Arequipa, Peru, to photograph stars in the Southern Hemisphere. In 1925, she became the first woman to receive an honorary doctorate of science from Oxford University. In 1935, she created the Annie J. Cannon Prize for the woman of any country, whose contributions to the science of astronomy are the most distinguished. She became the William C. Bond astronomer at Harvard University in 1938. The astronomer Cecilia Payne collaborated with Cannon and used Cannon's data to show that the stars were composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. Later life and death Annie Jump Cannon's career in astronomy lasted for more than 40 years, until her retirement in 1940. Despite her retirement, she continued to actively work on astronomy in the observatory up until a few weeks before she died. During her career, Cannon helped women gain acceptance and respect within the scientific community. Her calm and hard-working attitude and demeanor helped her gain respect throughout her lifetime and paved the path for future women astronomers. Cannon died on April 13, 1941, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, at the age of 77. She died in the hospital after being ill for over a month. 
The American Astronomical Society presents the Annie Jump Cannon Award annually to female astronomers for distinguished work in astronomy. Topic: <laughs> Awards and Honors. 1921 Honorary Doctorate from the University of Groningen, the Netherlands. 1925 First woman recipient of an honorary doctorate from Oxford University. 1929 chosen as one of the greatest living american women by the league of women voters 1931 first woman to receive the henry draper medal 1932 won the ellen richards prize from the association to aid scientific research by woman 1935 received an honorary degree from oglethorpe university first woman elected as officer of the american astronomical society the lunar crater Cannon is named after her. The asteroid 1120 Canonia is named after her. Nicknamed, Census Taker of the Sky, for classifying 300,000 stellar bodies, more than any other person. The Annie J. Cannon Award in Astronomy named in her honor, awarded since 1934 now annually, to a woman astronomer in North America. Cannon Hall, a residence dormitory at the University of Delaware, named in her honor. The Annie Jump Cannon House, residence of the President of Wesley College in Dover, Delaware Named Curator of Astronomical Photographs at Harvard Member of the Royal Astronomical Society in Europe Honorary Member of Phi Beta Kappa at Wellesley College Charter Member of the Maria Mitchell Association She is among the list of women in the heritage floor as part of Judy Chicago's art installation The Dinner Party 1994, Cannon is inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame A Google Doodle honoring her and her work appeared in 2014. Bibliography Pickering, Edward Charles Henry Draper Catalog. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. LCCN 18018382. OCLC 809461762, available in an updated, corrected, and extended machine-readable version. At Henry Draper Catalog and Extension, Canon Plus 1918 to 1924, ADC 1989. Vizier Archives. Strasbourg, France, Centre de Données Astronomiques de Strasbourg Strasbourg Astronomical Data Centre. Retrieved 8 January 2015. Online from Harvard University at the SAO, NASA Astrophysics Data System. Abstracts linked to GIF and PDF formats. 1923. The Spectrum of Nova Aquilae. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 81 OCLC 786374390. Spectra having bright lines. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 76 3. OCLC 786374401 1912. Comparison of Objective Prism and Slit Spectrograms. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 56 8. OCLC 786374385. 1912. The Spectra of 745 Double Stars. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 56 7. OCLC 786374368. 1912. Classification of 1,688 Southern Stars by means of their spectra. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 56 5. 
OCLC 786363259. 1912. Classification of 1,477 stars by means of their photographic spectra. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 56 4. OCLC 786374355. Pickering, Edward Charles. 1909. Maxima and Minima of Variable Stars of Long Period. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 55, pt. 2. OCLC 786370272. Pickering, Edward Charles. 1907. Second Catalogue of Variable Stars. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 55, pt. 1. OCLC 603459862. 1903. A Provisional Catalog of Variable Stars. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 48, 3. OCLC 786370792. Pickering, Edward Charles. 1901. Spectra of bright southern stars photographed with the 13 inch Boyden telescope as a part of the Henry Draper Memorial. Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard College Observatory, v. 28, pt. 2. OCLC 786363059 Topic See also Harvard Computers Henry Draper Catalog Sisters of the Sun 8th episode of Cosmos A Spacetime Odyssey 2014 American Science Documentary Television Series